Welcome as we gather to celebrate the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We at St. Basil's Parish regard the love of God to be the foundation of all life and ministry. We believe in the ever-present love of God as witnessed through Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit. We believe that each person is loved by God and is of sacred worth. Therefore, through God's grace, we welcome all persons to our parish. We express God's hospitality by creating a safe, healing, accessible, and transforming place for all to enter. Further, we acknowledge with gratitude and respect that we gather here on the unceded and unsurrendered territory of the Algonquin Nation, whose presence here reaches back to time immemorial. We honor their long history of welcoming many nations to this beautiful territory, and we uphold and uplift the voice and values of our host nation. Jesus, Jesus makes clear that there is an urgency in leaving the things of the world behind to follow him. Jesus calls each of us to give up the things of the world, to repent of our sins, and to follow him no matter the cost. He does not violate our freedom. However, he allows us to choose whether we will stay where we are or follow the way of the cross, which ultimately leads to everlasting life. In addition to your own personal intentions, please remember the Mass intention for the repose of the, of the souls in purgatory requested by a parishioner. Our presider today is Father Norm Bonneau. Please stand. Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, to the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today, as you heard, is the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Ordinary Time, the word's not a very good translation. It really comes from the word ordinal, that it means numbered Sundays. So we're in the 13th of a series of up to 34 numbered Sundays. You might say, well, what about the first 12? Well, we've already seen those between the Christmas season 
and the beginning of Lent. We started ordinary time, interrupted for Lent and Easter time. Now that Easter season is over, we resume with, with the numbered Sundays. The 13th Sunday will continue following Luke's Gospel all the way through till next Advent. And this whole sequence is what I like to term the difficult fidelity of discipleship. We follow Jesus through his ministry, through his public life, and as we listen to him and see the different episodes that he lived through, we too are following in his footsteps in what I call the difficult fidelity of discipleship. Lord Jesus, you strengthen us when we are weak. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> Christ Jesus, you give us courage when we are afraid. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you help us to be generous when we are tempted to think only of ourselves. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to life everlasting. Let us pray. O oh God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord spoke to the prophet Elijah and said, You shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, as prophet in your place. So Elijah set out from there and found Elisha, who was plowing. There were twelve yoke of oxen ahead of him, and he was with the twelfth. 
Elijah passed by Elisha and threw his mantle over him. Elisha left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Then Elijah said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? Elisha returned from following Elijah, took the yoke of oxen, and flat slaughtered them. Using the equipment from the oxen, he boiled their flesh and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then Elisha set out and followed Elijah and became his servant. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, for freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, Jesus set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for Jesus. But the Samaritans did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have their holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another, Jesus said, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury the dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord. But let me first say farewell to those at my home. And Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Live by the Spirit. Paul is blunt. Those are his words in the second reading you heard today from the letter to the Galatians. But Paul comes by his use of the Spirit quite honestly. If you look through all his letters, the word Holy Spirit appears well over a hundred times. It's one of his most important themes. And since we are now only three Sundays away from Pentecost, three Sundays ago, and as I mentioned earlier, we are now embarking on a long stretch from the 13th to the 34th Sunday in ordinary time, when the Spirit is at work, the Spirit is at work in the life of Jesus, and as we follow in his footsteps, we too find that the Spirit is at work in us as well. So it may be a good time, good time as any, to start talking about the Spirit. So I'll start with two 
verses, well, three verses, one from the Gospel according to John and two from Luke's Gospel. So here's the first one as we start to explore the meaning of the word Spirit, the Holy Spirit. This one is from John's Gospel. It's at the end, at the Last Supper, when Jesus is saying is what we call the farewell discourse to his disciples. And at one point, this is what Jesus says to them. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. He'll teach you all things. You'll get it. Now, in Luke's gospel toward the end, this is the risen Jesus that, who appears to the two disciples of Emmaus, a story that we know quite well, and at one point he upbraids them by saying that they should understand that all the scriptures are speaking about him. And this is what he says to them at the end. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them all in the scriptures the things concerning himself. Now, after the disciples of Emmaus have supper with Jesus, he disappears from them. They return to Jerusalem with the other 11. And then Jesus appears to all of them yet again. And then Jesus opens them the scriptures, and this is what he says to them. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. So the counselor, the Holy Spirit, the breathing of Jesus and so forth, has to do with somehow with understanding, with insight, with seeing correctly. And so I'll give you a little bit of an example that I've found very helpful over the years to try to get a better sense of what is meant by at least one dimension, at least, of the Holy Spirit. I'm sure you've heard of the word cataracts in people's eyes. And probably many of you know people, even yourself, have had the operation about cataracts, and my older brothers had that, some of my confreres have had that operation. Probably sometime soon my right eye will need that as well. The crystalline lens gets cloudy, and you can't see very well. And when they get the operation, well, then they put a different lens in there, and you can see normally again. Well, surgeons had learned how to operate on cataracts for over 150 years. So if we go back to the beginning, when surgeons were doing this, with a lot of people who needed that kind of operation. They also performed that surgery for people who had been born blind because of cataracts. And they grew up not being able to see. So the doctors would do the surgery. And then after the eyes were healed, across the board, when they asked the, the, the patient what they could see to make sure the operation had gone well, whether it was a young person, the age of elementary school, or somebody, a teenager, or an older person, across the board, every single one of them would start by saying, everything was like flat, two-dimensional. They see patches of color, patches of light and of dark. That's what they would see, two dimensions only. And it took a while for the doctors and for the patient to start learning to see things in depth, in three dimensions. And it's something they had to learn. They had to kind of work at it. So it doesn't come automatically. Now, infants, most of us are born seeing. Our eyes are fine. But we still have to learn to perceive things in that depth dimension, in space, and not just flat. And infants do that. You know when you play little games of peekaboo and hide and so forth? The, 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 the kids are trying to learn to interpret the distance and the shadows and the shapes. Or sometimes on cribs, we put mobiles, and the kids are playing with that. And the infants learn to do that, it seems, on their own, but they're working at it. We don't, see, we don't notice it. So this depth perception is not automatic, even if your eyes are fine, as these people who had been born blind with cataracts and where eyes were fine after the operation still had to work at interpreting the meaning of depth perception. One young lady, for example, had this operation done and then returned home. And her father was very dismayed because when she was walking in the house, especially going downstairs, she would close her eyes. She felt more comfortable feeling her way 
but she couldn't see the difference in the shadows and the shapes of the stairs. It was frightening her. Now, I use this example to talk about what happens to us to see through the eyes of faith. It is not automatic. It is something that has to be learned over time. And so we teach our kids, we have First Communion, we have confirmation for the younger ones, and then we come to church regularly on Sundays, we pray, we celebrate the sacraments, we do all that stuff, and eventually, slowly, little bit by little bit, we start getting a better idea of seeing the depth perception through the eyes of faith. All our sacraments work that way. But let me take just one as an example for today. The Eucharist, which is one that we know quite well, needless to say. Now, if we were to say, what is the depth perception, that third dimension through the eyes of faith of Eucharist, what would be placed in our open space? What would we embrace? Well, just from the book of Exodus, we'd have all the stories about manna. We'd have also from Exodus chapter 24, the sealing of the first covenant celebration, a ritual, where Moses sprinkles the people with the blood of the sacrifice, and the people accept all the laws and all the commandments that God brings them through Moses. That's also incorporated in our Eucharist, the blood of the covenant. Jesus says this to the, new, the blood of the new covenant. We'd also have to include in our depth perception of Eucharist the Passover meal. All the Seder suppers since the very beginning all the way through to today that the Jewish people celebrate. And of course Jesus himself on the night before he died was celebrating the Passover. And the words, this is my body, this is my blood, is to give a depth perception, a third dimension of what his crucifixion and resurrection signify. That's all, as it were, more in the past. But we're not finished. Included in this depth perception are things in the present as well, what we're doing here today. Here are some of the words of the Eucharistic prayer that I will be praying a little bit later. Needless to say, it has to do with the spirit. Blessed, it's addressed to God. Blessed indeed is your son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'll just reread one or two sentences in there, slightly changing the words, just to make a point. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send your holy insight, your holy understanding, your holy seeing, to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that we may become the body and blood of Christ. That's the meaning when we eat the bread and drink the cup, that we become the body of Christ. And that includes, that's part of our depth perception of Eucharist. And then there's the future, not just the past, not just the present, but also the future. Because when we leave, after we've celebrated the Eucharist, that's also part of that depth perception of the significance of the Eucharist. And when we leave, because we start seeing more and more through the eyes of faith, through this depth perception, then wherever we go, whatever we do in our lives, everything becomes sacramental. We see through sacramental eyes. Everything that we see in faith has a depth perception. The people around us, the planet we're on, all the things that we do, it's not just flat two-dimensional, it's three-dimensional, and through faith, through the eyes of faith, and that insight, that understanding, that way of seeing 
is the work of the Holy Spirit. We're very familiar, of course, with the sign of the cross, the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And uh, without wanting to be glib in any way, we could in some sense say the name of the Father and of the Son and of the holy insight, of the holy understanding, of the holy seeing. And so I guess Paul in his own blunt way was correct when he urges the people to whom he writes in Galatia and through them to us as well, rightly he should say, live by the Spirit. And clearly the, the words of the Apostles' Creed are part of how we learn to see in that third dimension through the eyes of faith. So we pray. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Seen by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. God, our Creator, your Spirit is at work in our world. And so hear the prayers we bring before you today. For the Church, living presence of God's love and compassion in the world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the health of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders who cry out for peace in the world, that their pleas may fall, may their pleas may fall on listening ears, we pray. Lord, hear, Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here, that we may cherish the freedom that God grants us as an opportunity for charity over self-indulgence, we pray. Lord, hear, Lord, hear our prayer. For the refugees of the world, that they may find welcome, security, and peace, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the newly baptized of our parish and those who support them, may the Lord bless them all the days of their lives, we pray. Lord, hear, Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of our world and the wise utilization of the Earth's resources based on need and not on greed, we pray. Lord, hear, Lord, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For those in our community who are suffering and of those who seek to ease their pain, please remember Teresa Hall, Edmund Edwards, John Dorner, Amanda Manette, Kelvin Hackinson, Lewis McAllister, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, Rose Sweeney, Edward Bundersky, Gerald Erskine, Ruth Louise Casey, Jack Valcour, Monique Bayo, mother of Sister Suzanne Kizoma, those who have died in Ukraine, those who have died from the coronavirus, and for those who mourn their passing, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear our prayers today and answer them according to your will. Give us the strength and courage to respond to your call with conviction and sincerity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
My sisters and brothers, pray that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord, for by your word you created the world and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as our mediator, as he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son you gather men and women whom you made into the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now when ages unending, with all the angels we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. <clears throat> You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, gave you thanks, and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, 
in whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the cup of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion together with, Marcel, with uh, Francis our Pope and Marcel our Bishop, with all other bishops and priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and sorrow, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, the martyr, St. Basil, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Needless to say, the Lord's Prayer is something that we learn, through which we learn to see in that third dimension through the eyes of faith. So together we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. We now share a sign of that peace with one another.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word of my sins. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, so that bound to you in lasting love, we may, be, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Make a few announcements. You can be seated. We have three announcements. Please consult today's bulletin for the events that are taking place in the next little while. In the meantime, we direct your attention to the following points. Please note that there will be no Monday 9 a.m. Masses during the summer months of July and August. The wooden lost and found chest in the children's corner, it's over there, in the back of the church contains a number of lost and found items. The chest will be emptied and the items placed out on a table in the narthex for a few weekends in July. Unclaimed items will be discarded or donated if appropriate. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Eucharist is ended. Let us go now go to love and in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. I get it right finally.